Okay, so uh, let's uh, take a look at this a little bit more. Um, so Hamlet yells at Pol Polonius, interrupts, and says it's too long, and the Hamlet gets really mad at him. Uh, and they, they debate, sort of, they, they're, they're having, Polonius is being an idiot, and he's just trying to, he's just trying to say something that seems smart, because he's a, he's an old man, and he likes to say stuff, and he, anyway, they just ignore him. So the, the first player continues the speech, this is the, again, these are actors, and he's continuing a speech as part of a theater, he's starting doing a theater speech for Hamlet, because the prince has asked him to do a speech, so he's going to do it. Run barefoot up and down, threatening the flames with bison room, that's tears, a cloud upon that head where late the diadem stood, diadem's the crown, um, and for a robe, uh, uh, and for a robe about her, and in all the over, and all the ore-teamed loins a blanket in the alarm of fear caught up. Who this had seen with tongue and venom steeped against fortune's state would treason have pronounced, right? If you'd seen this, you would have yelled treason, because they just killed the king. That's treason. But if the gods themselves did see her then, when she saw Pyrrhus make malicious sport in mincing with her sword or husband's limbs, the instant burst of clamor that she made, unless things mortal moved them not at all, would have made milch the burning eyes of heaven and passion in the gods. One thing that's interesting about this is that he's, this is um, this is the wife uh, the the wife of the, the the king who's being murdered sees him and screams and freaks out. There's a reason why Hamlet wants to hear this speech. It's because while Hamlet hates Claudius, he has a complicated relationship with his mom. Um, but I think he's thinking about if I his mom, uh, and depending on the movie version you watch, but his mom seems to really like Claudius. Um, so he's thinking if I murder Claudius, my well, mom's gonna be real upset. And so when he asks to hear a speech, um, he hears uh, the speech is about uh, the killing of a king, um, an old king. Uh, by a relative, I think. I think it's a nephew. I have to look it up. Um, uh, but also how upset that the wife is, and, and, and uh, the king's wife would be very upset. And again, Hamlet is using this to think about his own situation, um, to trying to he having, he's having trouble doing something about his life, and he thinks maybe this theater speech will kind of inspire him. Um, and then they go on, and, and this, this I'm not going to read all this, but he talks about... Um, uh, he talks to the players. Actually, this is one of my favorite lines in all of Hamlet. Um, um, Polonius says, I will use them according to their dessert, meaning I'm going to treat the actors as well as they deserve. Dessert here means deserve. And Hamlet says, use them better than they deserve. Use every man after his dessert, and who shall escape whipping? Meaning, if you treat everybody the way they deserve, you're going to have to whip everybody, because people are horrible. Um, so, so basically, he says, be nice to the actors. And, and Polonius is like, of course, I will treat them like they deserve to be treated. And Hamlet says, no, don't treat them the way they deserve to be treated. People are horrible. People deserve to be treated like shit. He says, treat them better than they deserve to be treated. Um, and he says right here, um, use them after your own honor and dignity. The less they deserve, the more merit is in your bounty. Meaning human beings are terrible. They don't deserve you to be nice to them. Be nice to them anyway, and it's good for you. It's a nice little piece of it. I think about that all the time. Right? He says, right, he's, I'll treat them how they deserve to be treated. No, treat them better than they deserve. Human beings are terrible and they deserve to be treated like shit, but you should treat them nice anyway because it's good for you to be kind to people that don't deserve it. I think that's really nice. Um, and then he talks to them a little bit more. Um, and then he gives one of his most famous speeches. Hamlet has like seven really big, super famous speeches in this play. Um, and this is one of them is, is right here. Um, uh, and it's his re all the he, all, he everybody leaves him alone. The actors leave, and Polonius leaves, and Rosencrantz and Guildenstern leave, and Hamlet is alone. Um, and what he thinks about is what Sidney is talking about, which is he he expects that this is going to inspire him, and it fundamentally doesn't. Um, so he says here, um, uh, "What a rogue and peasant slave am I? Is it not monstrous that this player here?" But in a fiction, in a dream of passion, could force his soul so to his own conceit that from her working all his visage wand, that's his face, conceit is idea, tears in his eyes, distraction in his aspect, a broken voice, and his whole function suiting with forms to his conceit, and all for nothing, for Hecuba. What's Hecuba to him, or he to Hecuba, that he should weep for her? What would he do had he the motive and cue for passion that I have? So he, he says this actor gets so worked up about fiction, right? These pieces, these, he doesn't know any of these people personally, but he says when the actor gave that speech, his eyes filled with tears and he really seemed like he cared about his situation. And it's, and it's he's pretending. The whole job of an actor is to pretend to care about things. Um, you have to pretend the way your character would pretend. Oh, act, acting is pretending. Um, so he says, I can't believe this actor is able to get so worked up, his emotions, so worked up over a fictional character. And he says, and I, 
I actually have a real reason. This guy's talking about a fictional character committing murder, and he gets so upset about it, his eyes fill with tears. And Hamlet says, well, th let's think of me for a second. He loves to think of himself. Hamlet says, I have a real reason to commit murder, and I can't get worked up about it, and it's actually happening to me. This actor can get all his emotions all worked up about something fictional. It has no relationship to him. And Hamlet's frustrated with this because he was, I think he was thinking that this story would help get him in the mood to finally kill Claudius. He's been waiting so long and getting distracted by all kinds of things. Um, and so his point is that it's just nuts that the actor can get so emotionally invested in something that isn't even true. Um, and Hamlet can't even get emotionally invested in his own real life, right? This guy gets so upset pretending to commit murder, and Hamlet can't seem to make him care about, Hamlet can't make himself care about the fact that he's supposed to commit murder. I um, mean, he has a good reason, because his uncle killed his, uh, his father. Um, he says, it, he, he says, if this guy, um, had the same, was in the same situation I was in, um, he would drown the stage with tears and cleave the general air with horrid speech, right? If he can get this worked up about fiction, what if he had my life? Um, then he would really freak out. All right, give me a second. I'm going to turn the page. Sorry about the weird angle, and you're just going to have to look at weird things in my yard now while I, I turn the page. But I only got so many hands, and I have a good table here, so just hold on a second. Um, and I'm almost finished with this speech. This is going pretty good. Okay, so he says this guy could give such a big speech Um um, he could make mad the guilty and appall the free, confound the ignorant and amaze indeed the very faculties of eyes and ears, right? If this guy had my, if this actor had my life, if he can get that into somebody that doesn't even exist, if he can be inspired, like Sidney says, art should inspire, inspire you to movement and motion. If he can get this into it, a fiction character, if he had my life, he'd lose his mind. But then in comparison, Hamlet says, I can't even make myself care about my real life. He cares more about fiction than real life. Um, um, yet I, a dull and muddy metal rascal, peak like John of Dreams, I'm pregnant in my cause and can say nothing. No, not for a king upon his property and most dear life, a damn defeat was made. Am I a coward? Um, by, by the way, there's a famous production um, where Hamlet says, am I a coward? And somebody in the audience yells, yes! Which is really, it really cracks me up. Because um, he's wondering, why is he stopping? Am I a coward? Who calls me villain? Breaks my pay to cross, plucks up my beard and blows it in my face. I mean, everybody's, people, Claudius has basically insulted me by killing my father. Um, why can't I fight with him? Tweaks me by the nose and gives me the lie in the throat as deep of the lungs. Who does, um, who, who does me this? Ha, swounds I should, swounds I should take it. This is a curse word meaning like God's wounds. For it cannot be by pigeon livered and lack gall to make oppression bitter. I mean, he feels like a coward. Or ere this, I should have fatted all the region kites with this slave's awful. Meaning I should have fed the king's, he calls the king a slave to insult him. The king's organs, I should have fed to all the birds. Bloody, body villain, remorseless, treacherous, lecherous, kindless villain. Oh, vengeance. What an ass am I. Um, and so I'm, I'm not going to keep going with that. But uh, the point is, is that he, he's tried to get worked up and excited about something um, from fiction. Just like Sidney says, Fic Sidney says fiction is supposed to inspire. I think for a lot of people it does, um, but Hamlet, it's just not working for him now. But he tries, um, he tries, and he 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 just thinks it's so crazy that someone can get so worked up about a fake person in a poem, um, and the and the idiot is a poem. Um, he can get so worked up about a fake person in a poem, but Hamlet can't seem to care about his real life enough. So there you have both Sidney and Plato, um, because like Plato. Um, Hamlet is noticing that people seem to care more about fictional situations than real life. That's the kind of thing uh, Plato was worried about. And like Sidney, um, he's trying to use stories uh, as a way of inspiring him in a, in a big speech. You could see him trying to get in the mood. As he And in, in the movies, he often rants and raves, oh, bloody, bawdy villain, remorseless, treacherous, lecherous, kindless villain, oh, vengeance. And in one movie version, a big painting falls on him at this point, And he says his next line is, oh, what an ass am I? Like, what an idiot. I'm trying to get all worked up. And I just, I can't care. So anyway, that's, uh, I think that's, uh, that's yeah, I'm going to go on to the next philosopher next, but I thought it would be fun to spend a little extra time with Hamlet because I do love Hamlet. Please read Hamlet. Something. Find out about him. Otherwise, these Hamlet sections are going to get real dull real fast. All right. I'll see you guys in the next video.